Between April 14th and 15th of 2018, Kauai communities were hit by record flooding. A rain gauge near Waipaw on the North Shore recorded 49.69 inches of rain, marking the most rainfall in a 24-hour period in U.S. history. A year later, the stories of those who experienced the flood were gathered and are shared here. It's just hard to describe and relate to other people who haven't experienced it. It wasn't like a slow surge or anything like that. It was like a raging beast. It was just, it was deadly, it was dangerous. It was, it was not, it was the scariest thing I think I've ever seen. I fought flood and I fought fire. Flood is worse. All of the land went out, the house is hanging, it's cracked in half, it's bent. The stairs don't go to the door anymore, the door doesn't open. The storm was the third time that they've literally lost everything. Wow. I look at it that way, I cannot fight Mother Nature, you know what I mean? You just gotta go with the floor. Yeah. Thank goodness we never have like major injuries or even people dead. That would have been a whole different story. So it's one thing about uh, Hawaii. Something happened. Everybody comes together, no matter where. This side, kick off side. It's still like on, like on family island. Everyone just like put on rubber boots and like went to clean up all of the um, fragments of these people's lives that were just scattered, you know, on the floor of their homes. People were fundraising, sending us 40-foot containers. It, it was crazy, like, the generosity that people had. Yeah, I mean, the fishermen came with their boats because there wasn't any access to pick people up in Hanalei and take people out to Hana and provide supplies and help. And yeah, it was a, a huge effort. Because we didn't have, they didn't, we don't, we still don't really have access down there. So everybody just came together with their boats, and jet skis, whatever you could do, I guess. When you have someone who will come and check on you just because of the fact that they're in the vicinity and they care about you, we're doing way better than a community that's disconnected. The more yeah. connectivity we have, not just in times of disaster, but as a community where I know your kids, I I know your health needs. You know we know e we know each other so well yeah. that we start building that resilience yeah. Yeah. Then, together. Yeah. In times of you know good and bad, right? It's like that natural instinct just kicked in in everybody's heart and soul that could think of doing something mm -hmm. was. Do whatever you can to make it better. The love everything everybody have for each other has been the greatest help. It makes this nothing. It makes it a joy, you know, not a hardship. And I think that we've given up too much. I think broadly we've given up too much power to government and to other entities to decide how it is we take care of ourselves. And at the government level, we've got a huge hill to climb in terms of community engagement, public engagement. I appreciate and value government's role in our lives, and so I really wanted to strengthen those relationships and then hold them accountable and ask them for help and facilitate where that help went. The whole government machine is so slow. The speed of, of, with which government moves in the democratic system is by design to supposed to be slow. But when we look at the times we're facing it, a system that by design goes slow, needing to respond, one has to ask, is, is, it, is, it, is it, are we gonna be able to meet the necessary response to what we're facing in the future? We see the change with um, less impact of humans here, and we are seeing not even even a, a year of how 
it's coming back for fishing, the, the, the seaweed, the, um, the water quality, the reef, um, and the cleanliness. You can see the sand look clean. You know, just to see the place like this, the healing process. That's the most positive thing, yeah. I think, out of everything that uh, the land has been able to rest for the last year. You know, the, the other thing I worry about is as we lose all the lo'i, you know, that acts as a um, holding area for water too during, during floods. As we get more urbanized, what, what's going to happen, especially if, if part of the climate change is dealing with these rain bomb kind of situation. I worry about the road opening and all the tourists coming down. My reason for that is traffic. Mm -hmm. In the event of another disaster, mm -hmm. no way we would make it out of here in time. Spring, but once it opens back up again, to everyone, it's just going to be a zoo again. It's just like in your own house. There's only so much people can be in the house. You can pile up the house. But are you as individuals will be comfortable for the place inside the hall? I think that everybody realized that cannot go back to how it was. This monumental storm that you know might be a hundred we consider a hundred year storm right now, it might be the new ten year storm, you know? We might keep getting hit like this fairly regularly. And um, if we keep trying to fit into the mold of how things used to be, it might just keep getting destroyed. Just, you know, do it right so it can last. I think I saw the best, tremendous leadership and bravery and sacrifice. We have so much to be proud of and how we came through it. We have great needs, but we have what it takes. I'd like to work with this community, making it a self-sufficient one, one that does not rely on anybody else or anybody's money, but get involved. So there's a bigger picture here. It's just, we're just starting. First with survival, now let's, let's step it up so that we can be a self-sufficient thing. And then there is no expectation, and maybe that'll pass on to the next one. And every, and every community can do that and be proud of running their own. Yeah. You know? They don't got to count on nobody. Say, except each other. <laughs>